So we have an update that might impact a lot of players, especially Iron Man that hasn't done Theater of Blood yet, because the Blade of Saldor, which is the best in slot slash weapon in the game, which is better than the Tentacle Whip, has the ability to become permanent. So my original recording got messed up unfortunately, but to turn your regular Blade of Saldor into the infinite one, or the imbued one, the Blade of Saldor uh, eye, the one I have right now, you just have to bring a thousand crystal shards with you alongside the regular blade and you use it on the bolt and you just combine it together. So let me give you an overview of what this weapon is about. So it is the best melee weapon in the entire game for a uh, single handed weapon, but it's also tied in a sense with these other weapons, the rapier and the inquisitor mace. So what's different about them then, if they're like equally as strong in general? Well as you can see, they all share the same strength bonus, right? 154, max strength. So these weapons are all the same max at Y across the board. The only difference is their specialty in the accuracy department. So the blade is the master of slash. Very strong against slash weak uh, opponents, such as theater blood bosses. And the rape here, 160 stab, is really strong against things like fossil crystals, things are weak to stab. And then we have the mace, very strong against Crush, 160 Crush, against Kelphite Queen, the Nightmare, uh, Cerberus, etc. So as you can see, they all specialize in different places. So for Iron Man players, and to a lesser degree, main accounts, the blade was just not something people wanted to use before this update because one, you had to keep recharging it, which is a pain in the ass. And two, if you wanted to get the blade, you had to do it from the Corrupted Gauntlet and the Corrupted Gauntlet is very, very difficult content for most players over something like the Rape here, which was infinite and, you know, came from Theater of Blood, which was way more rewarding in general because of all the different rewards. Before this update, there was really only one choice for Iron Man players to upgrade their melee weapon. It's basically from the Whip to the Grazi Rapier, so essentially just head to Theater of Blood whenever possible. But now with this update, it could be something like a whip to the Blade of Saldor and then Theater of Blood for like the Scythe and the Rapier. Because the Blade of Saldor doesn't degrade, it's actually quite worthwhile for some of you guys to go and get it from the Corrupted Gauntlet. So if you plan on actually completing Theater of Blood and get all the items, it's probably going to take you several hundred hours. So having the Blade for a several hundred hour grind would definitely be worthwhile. It would probably take approximately 70 to 80 hours to get the Blade of Saldor through the Corrupted, assuming you start getting consistent at it and you're not dying too much. So this is all going to tie into my own personal progress on Mr. Iron Bar because I'm doing a lot of Corrupted Gauntlet myself. I'm actually uh, going for the pets currently. And yeah, this week especially, I'm going to be going hard on the Corrupted Gauntlet in hopes of trying to get the pets. And... All along the way, I'm going to be providing some interesting tips and tricks that I've discovered throughout the hundreds of corrupted gods that I've struggled through to help some of you guys out you know, on your own journey if you wish to go for the blade yourself. Also, getting this blade could become really useful for your Slayer training because it is the best melee uh, training weapon in the game tied with the rapier and the maze. So if you don't have the other two, this blade can help you a lot during your Slayer as well. Anyways, here's 113 uh, gauntlets that we've done, I think, since I've came back. So I've done 113 since I came back. And this is the reward so far. 21 mil, crystal armor seed, and uh, 4 elites, and a lot of outs. So this part of the video is going to be dedicated to helping new people get into the gauntlet. Specifically, how to prep the major things to focus for from start to finish. So if you guys are completely new to the gauntlet, I won't be covering all of the basics. However, in the description, I'll send you over to a decent guy that I found on YouTube that covers all of, like the basics. So before you get to the hunt lift, I would say there are three preparatory stages. The first stage is really straightforward. You want to get around 100 to 110 shards so you can make yourself a tier 2 weapon and also enough vials to make your prayer pots and stamina pots. So I typically make the bow, but another great strategy is to find a demi boss first and then make the tier 2 weapon that corresponds to the one that you find. Remember, the demi bosses do not spawn in the middle rooms, they only spawn on the very far outside rooms. And once that's done, we're on stage 2. Stage 2 is where you get the rest of your shards to make the armor 
the rest of your tier 2 weapons, and also a crystal teleport for the last food prep later on. That's going to cost approximately 240 shards. By this point in time, you should be going towards the outer rooms because that's where the demi bosses are. Your goal is to find at least two demi bosses, sometimes three if you're picky with a certain weapon that you want to main, like a bow or something. Uh, along the way, you want to find enough ore, enough bark, enough cotton, uh, enough of the leaves for your armor, your potions, and also fish whatever food that you can fit in your inventory. You might have to kill some things along the way if you see that you're short on shards. That usually is an issue. But yeah, by the time you kill your two demi bosses, you should have all that stuff. And then you come back to the room with your free telly and then make all that stuff. And then we're on stage three. Stage three is the simplest. You should have enough shards for the extra teleport that you're going to make. And yeah, you're going to go out there and get the remainder of your food. You want to have ideally 24 to 25 Simply just fish enough food and then come back and cook it and you are ready to go for the Hunt Lift fight. If you want to learn the basic mechanics of the Hunt Lift, definitely check out the guide in the description. But for now, I'm going to be covering some very nuanced things that will help you with the Hunt Lift fight. Number one is going to be click accuracy. Clicking accuracy is super important at Hunt Lift because there's three ways that one misclick can fuck you over and instantly end your run. Whether it's a tornado, a disco floor, or getting trampled, all cause of simple misclicks. So in order to prevent this, you need to find the optimal viewing uh, perspective or camera zoom. You don't want to be too zoomed out that your clicks are so poor, and you also don't want to be too zoomed in that you can't click to where you want to go. In this video, you'll see a camera distance that I recommend. So generally speaking, you want to have a camera angle that can show you the entire square of the boss. So that way you can actually uh, click precisely, but also click to where you want to go, especially if it's a far away distance. If you're having trouble focusing and keeping track of the number of attacks the boss has done, I believe that having the game sounds on actually helps you with that because it reinforces the number of attacks that it does. And another big tip is please save the heck up especially during the last half of the fight when there's like three or four tornadoes because if you keep your hp above 80 you can even survive getting wrecked by multiple tornadoes it'll give you a chance to keep going i see too many people die with like a half an inventory of food that shouldn't be happening and also if you know for a fact that the kill is lost i won't even let the boss kill me because that really fucks you up and tilts you really hard so instead if you know for a fact that you're gonna fail the run, just right click escape on the door, it'll instantly teleport you out. It's less tilting that way. Hackers often target RuneScape accounts through various vulnerabilities that you may not realize you have. One of the biggest vulnerabilities is the email tied to your RS account. There are many ways that your email becomes vulnerable to hackers. One of the most common tactics is through database leaks. Say your RS account's email is also connected to another website, if that other website has a database leak, all personal information, including your email, will be available for anybody that's trying to hack online accounts. Luckily, Dashlane exists to help you monitor things like database breaches associated with your emails so that you can prevent hacks before it happens. Dashlane can create and manage all your passwords in one secure place. Dashlane also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information, a VPN to prevent prying eyes from tracking your online activities as well. Dashlane works across all devices including all Apple products, PCs, Android, Safari, and Chrome so that all facets of online browsing is extra secure and easy to manage. To get Dashlane for free for life on your first device, laptop, or phone, head to dashlane.com slash ricecup and use my promo code RICECUP to use it on everything and get 10% off. Alright, with this kill, I'm going to be at 600kc. 200 more to go and then I hit that pet rate of 1 in 800. It was going good and then towards the end. I flopped around too much. Oh, nice. Another elite clue scroll. So it is time to work on another master. Alright, let's lower this guy over here. Don't want him on the wall. There we go. Perfect. Now I can run around the boss. Oh shit, damn. So many elite clues. This is like my third master, bro. 
combo breaker. Here we go. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. The rune full helmets. Nine rune full helmets that kill. What? That's insane. Well, I just made like 300k in pure GP, you know? Perfect. That's a tough situation to be in there, but... I moved away, I moved across the boss as soon as it was on cooldown, so... So we managed to save our ass. I'm digging the freaking Nexus portal for Barrows though, so nice. At least we got the nut sacks, though, you know? Ah, that's annoying. This is why you don't want to run straight into the tornado, because... You always want to be like, on, on a different line than the tornadoes. There's a, it's very easy to get smacked by multiple tornadoes. Oh, hell yeah. Crystal Armor Seed. So the Crystal Armor Seed can actually be traded in for 250 Crystal Shards, which is insane. Okay, good. It's in a good spot. Well, not quite, but I can easily get it away from that wall. There we go. Oh, this is perfect. So the tornado run is super useful with the Halley as it'll optimize your DPS without having to run away. However, it's very risky, at least at the start when you're learning, but once you get really good at it though, you can kind of just set it up whenever you want. But anyways, the key to setting it up is you need to make sure you're three squares back from the boss. You can also do four squares, uh, your choice, but you also want to time it with the tornado. So you want to start the tornado run uh, going the back and forth motion when the tornadoes are getting close to you. Like one tick away from hitting you. And that's the secret. So just keep watching this part if you need reference. Oh, hey look, speaking of 700, we're at 700. Nice, 700 KC, 100 more to the pet rate, yeah. Alright, we got this master, I don't even know where, but here we go. Feels good, man. Hell yeah, I just got Magic Fane, that's 20,000 skills. Ooh, yeah, giant egg sacks, let's go. So I decided that I'm just going to do Serenus whenever I need red spider eggs because right now I do. I only got like, I think 200 restores on me. So yeah, I got to restock soon. Try to get the pet along the way and some egg sacks and some clue scrolls. You know, we're going to jumpstart this grind a bit. Nice. 100 KC at this boss. Easy. All right. So I just realized these egg sacks, which hold 100 red spider eggs, are 1 in 20. So... If I were to get the pet on the average, which is 1 in 3,000, I would get 150 egg sacks, which is 15,000, I believe, red spider eggs. That's a lot of eggs, man. Oh, rip. Fuck. Oh, damn it, dude. That sucks. Oh, thank God. My guttons came in clutch there. I really needed that. Damn, this is a fast ass kill. Two minutes left on my B heart. This could be a PB, honestly. I wonder what it's in. Oh, yeah, this could be a PB. What we get? 1632? Holy balls. Yeah, that's that's a PB. Literally, the secret is the B heart. The longer it takes for me to use my B heart in the third phase, that's why I know. Okay, well. Damn, I got to the pillar phase with like 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the view heart. Holy crap. Nice PB. God damn, boys. Oh shit, I just hit 1400kc. Nice. Oh, oh, new PB. Nice, 407. Hell yeah. Oh, damn, another PB. That's why I was saying it's smooth. I'm gonna bait this parasite. He can't he can't heal? Oh well he healed one in step two. So that's good. I'm liking Serenus quite a lot. It's pretty fun to go for like a daily hard clue. 
from this boss because it works so well with the elite clues that I get from like the gauntlet. I've been going pretty hard on that. This boss is absolutely insane. I literally just got the heart clue and I left to put it back and I came back for the first kill. I get another heart clue. Alrighty, let's uh, wrap up this quick farming uh, trip here of Toe Flask. I just did my uh, probably this is my last trip to get a thousand toe flags maybe let me see yeah nice look at that holy crap dude it's crazy you can do like ape herb patches nowadays or something like that and yeah oh <laughs> I almost got a hundred toe flags for one trip oh man that's crazy it probably only took me like 14 trips of herb runs to get a thousand toe flags it's so nutty nowadays dude it's crazy I remember the days when you can only do five now you can almost do double if you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely consider giving it a like. I'm assuming you did because you made it to the end. But yeah, it would help out a lot in promoting this video. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I do have a French chat, so if you guys need a place to hang out, definitely consider joining ours at Mr. Iron Bar. And also, consider subscribing. That way you won't miss on future videos. And if YouTube content isn't enough, I do stream all of my live progress on Twitch as well. So consider visiting us on twitch.tv slash Anyways, I will see you guys soon with another video. Take care and bye bye.